with $120,000 for the first place prize. This is what I flew all the way to Montreal, Canada for. Dressed in my Sunday's best, the brand new Luck Dice hoodie. I've got all the luck on my side and boy will I need it to win. This is how you win a poker tournament and the tutorial is coming right up. The journey starts here. Two players off the money, level 17, blinds are 4K, 8K, 8K, and I pick up aces in early position. It's always nice to see a premium on the bubble with a decent stack and one that's happy to play a hand. Anyways, aces, I raise things up to 17,000. Action folds around to the big blind who makes the call. Every pot is dicey here because no one wants the bust. We're very close to the money. The flop comes ace, queen, deuce, two spades. Good and bad here because one, Obviously I have top set, it's amazing, but secondly, not great because it's hard to get paid. Anyways, I still have to throw out a bet and I size to 12,000 and I get a quick fold, unfortunately. So yeah, nice to pick up bases, nice to win a hand on the bubble. And now moving on, there's 34 players left. We are officially on the stone bubble and I have 360,000 in my stack, which makes me the largest stack at the table so far. And I pick up ace nine offsuit in the hijack with an ace, raise it up to 16,000 on the bubble. Player to my left, who seems pretty aggressive, has about 320,000 in this stack. Three bets me to 48,000, and now action folds to me. We have similar size stacks. It would be a little bit suicidal to go for it, but hey, that's what I'm here to do. I have just a little bit more chips than him, and we're gonna ramp up the pressure because I make the four bet to 115,000, and he comes in for a call pretty quickly. So here we go, massive pot brewing right on the stone bubble. One person to bust till we're all in the money, and it comes ace, four, deuce, two spades. Pretty sick flop. If I'm gonna be bluffing pre-flop with an ace in my hand, always nice to bink top pair. I'm gonna bet 100% of the time and here, flopping top pair, I decide to throw out 45,000 and I get a snap fold. So very, very nice development here. Nice to pick up a good amount of chips pre-flop, see a very nice flop and take it down. I'm chipping up closer to 500,000 chips and we are officially now in the money after this nice little announcement. So after all that fun play, we're now post the bubble, officially in the money with 33 players left and we get into a dicey spot. I pick up king 10 of clubs under the gun. With the big blind player with the very, very short stack, about seven big blinds, give or take, I'm going to raise on the little bit bigger side here and make it 32,000. Action folds to an older gentleman who has literally V-pipped like 85%. The last two levels here at this point of the tournament, which is insane, he makes the call. So someone who's very, very aggressive, playing basically 85% of all of his hands, almost every single hand. Who knows what he can have, but he can have any two here. Big blind calls as well, so we're gonna go three ways to a flop, which is magical in 10-8 deuce, two clubs. Top pair, great kicker, flush straw, got the world. Big blind checks over to me, and considering how this other opponent is playing any two cards and being a little bit aggressive, I am going to check it over to him and set the trap. This older gentleman decides to throw out a bet of 65,000. Big blind folds and now onto me, I've got a decision to make because folding is definitely not one of them. The scary part about this is that the opponent actually has more chips than me, so he covers me. And I have about 400,000 chips in my stack at this point. So usually I think a call is fine, but against the opponent that's literally playing any two cards, I'm going to check raise and be aggressive. I make it a small check raise to 165,000, making it very, very easy for him to continue with really anything. Just flick in another 100,000 chips and he makes the call and we got a really big pot brewing and I have about 200,000 left in my stack. And we see the turn four, Brick City. And I actually, don't think I want to shove here. Uh, I have so much equity, I think, and I want to let some of his weaker hands to call. So instead of going all in for my 200K, I decided to size down really, really small. It's a little awkward, to be honest, of 75,000. It's basically committing my entire stack in the middle because I just bet a third of my stack behind. And I just want him to call with like an eight or something or pocket nines, pocket sevens, something that feels very priced in but he ends up tanking for a long time, doesn't look comfortable, and then starts talking out loud, which is usually a clear sign of him folding. And he says, quote, unquote, I know I'm beat here. Thinks about it for a little bit more and then ends up folding face up and you will not believe what he just folded. Pocket queens, what? 
Oh my goodness, I am just in shock when he shows me that. Number one, how does someone who is raising and playing 85% on the hands just slow play queens at this point? And number two, he said that I raised one time since he sat down, which is true, and put me on aces or kings solely. So I said, fair enough, sir. I play along because he clearly isn't on poker YouTube. Anyways, I think I just dodged a bullet here. I mean, I certainly had a lot of outs, but if I missed, I certainly would have committed the rest of my stack. And I think he just saved my tournament life here. With 25 players left, he kept me alive. Big shout out to him. Much, much appreciated. Hey guys, just want to interrupt the video because if you're watching this video right now when it's uploaded, you have less than 24 hours left of the biggest merch drop I've ever released to date. I'm giving away this very special Rolex, the first one I ever purchased that's engraved with the Rampage logo. So kind of a one-on-one -on -one thing and definitely sentimental for me. And this kind of might be the last time I ever get to wear it, but uh, I can't wait to give it to one lucky person that purchases something from the latest merch drop. All the designs that you see are behind me. Really looking forward to uh, releasing this one, this very vintage Luckbox Club that kind of showcases the story of being established in 2019, being from Boston, Massachusetts. Love that. Luck dice here that I've won the uh, tournament that you're actually watching right now. It's my first time wearing it and I banked the tournament, which is awesome. And then lastly, the very last rendition of the Luckbox design with the WPT Global collab with the patch here on the right sleeve. All of this is only live for another 24 hours if you're watching this video right now. So click the link, rampagepokerstore.com. I'm gonna be live streaming the drawing of the giveaway of this Rolex here on December 10th on my Instagram. So uh, if you purchase one of these, tune into that live feed and uh, good luck to one lucky person that's gonna win this. So rampagepokerstore.com and let's get back to banking this tournament. So after that insane hand, probably tournament altering hand here, I pick up pocket kings under the gun and I raise it up to 35,000 with the big blinds going up. The same opponent from last hand who's literally playing every single hand makes the call and everyone ends up folding. So once again, now we're playing heads up against the same opponent who is playing any two cards. Sometimes he has queens, sometimes he has nothing. Anyways, the flop comes nine, three deuce, two spades. And I'm just not gonna be slow playing this. Considering how I've seen my opponent play pocket queens, I just want to bet and put a lot of money in the middle because I have a good hand. So I bet 75,000 sizing up here for trying to be all in on the river. And he does make the call for 75,000. So we've got another really big pot brewing and it comes another deuce. Board is paired. This is an amazing card for me because I have the best two pair combination, although I probably already did in the beginning. Anyways, I'm gonna size to 110,000 now because now I actually cover my opponent and he has about 250,000 in this stack, give or take. So he does think about it for a while and ends up making the call again for 110,000. So now we've got a massive pot brewing and he doesn't have a whole lot behind, about 130,000 left. We're going to a river which comes another board pair and it's a nine. Ooh, this is a little dicey. Definitely not a fun card to see, of course. Now his most likely holdings that we're calling with a nine has a full house and I don't beat a full house anymore. But uh, the only issue is that my opponent has literally no chips left in his stack, 130,000 behind. The pot is huge at this point. So I guess I have to hope that he has a hand like pocket eights or maybe even pocket queens again, who knows? So I'm all in here and my opponent does not snap call, which is awesome. Nice to fade that and he ends up folding. He looks like he's folding and he ends up making the fold, which is fine. Um, he folds saying he had a lot of outs, so it looks like he had some sort of combo draw on the flop. And lucky, lucky me for fading it all. And this time, what's funny, he put me on king's last hand, but this hand, I actually have kings. Funny how that works, but we're scooping up another massive pot and we're chipping up big time here before we look down at ace eight offsuit in the cutoff. Action folds to me. I raised up to 35,000 and oh my God, guess who makes the call? Our lovely friend that we've been battling with. I'm 2-0 against his opponent and he makes the call in the big blind with about 250,000 in his stack now. We're going to a flop of, well, it's just amazing. Seven, six, five, all hearts. I've got the open-ended straight draw along with the nut flush draw with the ace of hearts. And when my opponent checks over to me, I throw out a bet of 18,000. He snap goes all in. We've got to pause the video here because I snap call. Actually, first I actually recheck my cards, making sure I have the ace of hearts because I have an easy, easy non-decision. 
um, by calling here. And yes, confirmed, I do have the Ace of Hearts, not the Eight of Hearts. So here we go, we're back to snap call mode and we're going all in against my opponent. Another big pot, three times in a row, back to back to back situations. And he has five, six for two pair. Pretty good holding, but I've got a lot, a lot of outs and immediate bink on the turn with the four of hearts. And I fade the straight flush uh, chop outs here and full house outs as well. And River Brick, let's freaking go. In an incredible fashion of three straight hands back to back to back, I have ended up stacking this opponent, unfortunately for him, but all the chips have gone to me and I have almost 1.1 million now in my stack somehow. <laughs> what a ridiculous turn of events. Just uh, got the right folds when I needed it, got the calls when I needed it, and hit the draws when I needed. That is how you run hot in a tournament, guys. All right, I don't think lighting's very good here. I'm right behind, uh, in front of the iconic Buffalo uh, slot machines. Anyways, holy shit, I found the sun run. I have won all of the big hands, whether I was value bluffing or I had it. And uh, holy shit, 22 players left. I have a little bit of a personal sweat that you guys don't really know or care about. It's currently 1130 and this is a one day tournament. The issue is that I have a flight out of here back home at 8 a.m. So I have to be at the airport by 7 a.m. And there's 22 players left and I haven't packed yet. And uh, there's a lot of issues happening. People are not, are not dying very quickly. And it might be a really long one if I run deep. So I have a, a lot of trips right now, which is great for the tournament. Not great for the flight, but oh well. If I have to reschedule and stay an extra day, then so be it. But uh, it's a little bit of a sweat. Um, it's 11.30, which means I have six hours to close this out, to be comfortable, to make it back to the hotel, pack, then go to the airport and check in. Anyways, so far so good with the tournament, though. Uh, on my second bullet, things are going smoothly. Let's just keep on running it up. Coming back from break, I am steamrolling right now. We're at level 21, blinds are 10K, 20K, 20K, and I have 1.1 million in my stack. And the average stack is only 370,000. So massive chip leader so far at this stage of the tournament. And I pick up queen jack of hearts in the cutoff. I raise it up to 40,000, get the small blind, who's a very big stack with about 700,000 in the stack. He ends up tank calling. Uh, the tank call is of note because maybe he wanted to three bet. Not sure how strong his hand is, but not strong enough to three bet it seems. So we're gonna see what happens when the big blind calls as well. So three ways to a flop we go, which comes king eight three, two spades and a diamond. Action checks it over to me, having queen jack. Think this is just gonna be a pretty good spot to bet. Have good removal from all the strongest kings and yeah, I'm just gonna go for it because why not? I throw out about a 40,000, praying that everyone just ends up folding and have a very easy decision by winning this pot, but that doesn't happen because a small blind ends up making the call, which is kind of makes sense here because he should have a very strong range, probably a strong hand. We're gonna go on to the turn, which is the ace of diamonds this time. Oh dear, brings in a backdoor flush draw, improves me to a gut shot straight draw, and I think this is perfect because this is not a card I'm gonna be slowing down on ever. I'm gonna go for it. I've already made up my mind and my opponent checks it over to me here and I'm sizing up because it's an ace. And I think I can apply a lot of pressure to my opponent here by throwing out a bet of 175,000. For 175, if he makes the call, we've got a really big pot brewing here in our hands. And when he does make the call, oh God, this could certainly be scary. Let's see a river, which is the seven of spades. Shit. Front door flush completes. And now my opponent is in the tank, which is very scary because I've already made up my mind. I'm gonna, gonna commit my hand as a bluff here. And it's scary because if he decides to like throw out a very small bet of some sort, then it's annoying. Cause I think I'm gonna have to fold and I'm not really gonna be able to win this pot. But after thinking for a long time, he ends up checking and okay, let's just hope he was posturing and pretending like he had a decision and wanted to scare me off from firing this third bullet on the river because he has just under 400,000 chips in his stack and you already know what I'm about to do. It's announce all in. And quickly, it's not a sweat, man. He ends up folding very quickly, which is awesome. So uh, nice to pull the trigger on the river. It's always nice for it to work as well. And I scoop in another one, had to earn this one without hitting anything. Queen high in a dream takes it down. 
We're moving right along. People are busting and here pocket sevens on the button. I raised up to 40,000 and now action on the big blind with 1 million chips himself. Another very, very big stack. He three bets to 110,000. Once again, facing a three bet from out of position is a little bit scary. I don't think these opponents here are gonna be three betting super bad hands. So we're gonna have to see a flop here because I'm never gonna be folding a pair like sevens. So we're gonna go to a flop which comes a seven four. Oh my God, it's amazing, but it's all clubs. A little bit scary here. Uh, so I think it's a bink of a flop, but I can't be too sure yet. Anyways, a set's pretty good, but like like I said, the monotone board is scary. Anyways, I probably don't want to play a massive pot against the number two stack in this tournament with only 13 players left, by the way, here. So we're gonna see how it goes. My opponent starts off with a bet of 50,000. And like I said, sticking to the theme of not really wanting to play a massive pot, I decided to just make the call and kind of slow play, I guess. Maybe slow play is the wrong word, but certainly not gonna raise just yet. Anyways, going to a turn which comes a 10, and now he fires out 100,000. And I'm just kind of confused. Uh, I think this is a card that he should be betting really big on a lot of the time. So I think this small sizing just isn't going to fly with me here. He can have a lot of hands that have good equity, like king queen with a club, an ace with a club, lots of hands that I can get value from and also deny equity from. So it's scary, but I decided to raise it up to 350,000 over this very small bet. And now my opponent is in the tank and he thinks about it for a very, very long time. Ends up talking out loud once again, which is probably an indication that he's gonna be folding. He says that he thinks his hand is good, but doesn't want his tournament to end right now. And when he says that, I feel pretty good about my hand. I kind of wish he didn't say anything because now it probably means he's gonna be folding a lot of the time. Like how can you ever say this and then just call? That would be like an insane angle, I think. So he does end up folding and he folds face up and it's a really impressive one. Ace four off suit. Wow. Pretty good fold by him. Two pair versus a set on the flop, but he had the similar intentions where seeing a monotone board is always a little scary. So I don't win the maximum, but I do win a good chunk here in a three bet pot. And now I've got about 1.6 million in my stack. We got 11 players left moving on to level 23 where we actually have made it to the final table of 10. This final table of 10 might turn the final table of nine real quickly as we see the very first all in of the final table, aces into jacks. And now, unfortunately for the person who had pocket jacks, his stack is now crippled. So we got some pretty interesting dynamics happening where everyone wants to stay alive, everyone wants to make the pay jump, and we got one person on his way out with one foot out the door. And we see the next all in, ace queen wins versus ace 10. This is gonna be the first knockout of the tournament. I will say I have almost 2 million chips at this point, uh, just slowly chipping up silently, winning some small pots here and there. And here, just like that, we've got nine players left. We have a little bit more room at this final table. We're moving on to level 25. Blinds have increased. I pick up pocket eights in the big blind. The button raises things up off 12 big blinds. Small blind fold, and I think this is a little strange, but obviously gonna have to shove and be all in here. About 12 big blinds effective. And my opponent snap calls with ace five off suits. All right, he's got an ace, he's gonna go with it and Dealer gives us the hold. Thank you, Mr. Dealer. We got eight players left, one by one, knocking players down, and I'm chipping up, which is always very, very good for the cause, because we see two hands later, I'm on the button with ace nine off suits. Stacks at play are a little interesting. Small blind only has five big blinds, and the big blind only has about 10 bigs, so it seems like a pretty easy all in with a decent ace here. Small blind folds, big blind tank calls, and he has pocket eights himself. So time to crack my own hand that I just knocked out the other player with. And I end up flopping an ace. Thank you, dealer. What an incredible time. Winning all the flips when it matters the most. And I'm gonna hold Bink City, baby. We've got seven players left just like that after winning back-to-back -back flips. We're seven-handed and I have 3.2 million out of the 7.9 million in play. So already sitting with about 40% of the chips in play, trying to finish this thing off. Next clip we're gonna see, we see another all in. We see a flop of 963 rainbow and the short stack is all in with jack nine versus a covering stack with aces. Well, 
That's going to be a GG's to Jack9. Suddenly, very quickly, six players left. And even more quickly, the very next shuffle, we see another all-in. Aces versus Jacks. Oh my goodness, how many aces is going on at this final table? I unfortunately haven't picked up aces in this FT yet, but I'm not complaining because aces is going to win this time. So immediately we go from six players left and now the player with jacks is crippled. And now we see that crippled player is all in with ace seven suited up against pocket queens and queens is going to win and hold this one and suddenly five players left very quickly went from 10 all the way down to five just gotta knock out four more players to officially win this tournament hold your horses everyone because literally the very next deal like 30 seconds later we see another all in it's king 10 versus queen 10 king 10 the dominating hand also has the covering stack we see the king on the river, which was not very necessary because king high was already good anyways. But now five turns into four players left. Closer and closer to winning. The entire time, I'm happily just watching and picking my spots to win a few chips here and there. But every single pot I win is massive because I'm building my chip lead. And we're in level 27 now. Blinds of increase were the 80k big blind on. And I pick up Jack 10 offsuit in the small blind. Big blind has about 10 big blinds here. So Jack 10, easy, all in, blind versus blind. He snap calls with ace three. All right, we've got a nice little flip. We've got about 40% and I see an amazing flop. I have a double gutter plus a pair draw. Turn seals the deal. Wow, just immediately turn the nuts with Jack 10. And GG's to my buddy Vinny here who placed in fourth place here. A fellow Northeast guy and I'm going to stack him, win this one, and suddenly three-handed. Not a whole lot of drama when you just hit every single draw and win every single flip imaginable, but here I have a massive chip lead over the other two opponents with somewhere in between 70 to 80% of the chips in play. Let's close this one out. Three-handed play starts with me in the small blind here. The button goes all in for 540,000 chips. It's about five and a half big blinds, give or take, something like that, 540K. With pocket fours, I think it's somewhat close, but ended up leaning on a call. Big blind gets out of the way, and we see we're up against ace nine. So another flip here. How can I lose this one? Oh. That's, that's how. All right, I've come back to life, all right? I can't win every single flip. I do lose the one with pocket fours. This hand betrayed me. But I double up the shortest stack at the table. He has just over 1 million chips now at this point. And we're moving on to the next hand where blinds have increased 100K big blinds now. And I've got ace four off suits. I'm on the button. Everyone's short. Seeing an ace is good enough to be all in. Slavon has 16 big blinds. He folds. Big blind has 10 big blinds. He calls with ace queen. Oh dear. This time, not a flip. I am very much behind. We see a four on the flop. Pocket fours betrayed me, but ace four finds the good old two-sider four. And it's going to hold no queen on the turn or river and an unfortunate bad beat to the ace queen player who, honestly, if he won this, he really would have been in good shape with 20 big blinds. But the sun run is strong in this tournament here. Shout out to Cole here. Dealing me all the suck outs, huh? Well, yeah. Do that way. This is what Thanks, my hands man. look like. You'll see it. One more to go. <laughs> One more to go. All right, we're heads up. Uh, here's the ring that I guess we're playing for. I don't know if you can see it. This is what, we're, what we got. Those are the chips that I have. I have most of the chips, but we're heads up for 120K up top, locked up 85, 85,000. So that's it. Just um, one more, one more little suck out is all I need, I guess. Here we go. Luck dice in action. That would be fun to end off this trip, huh? Shout out to my David. Cash ever. Oh my God, congrats, man. Shout out to David, we're here till 3.30 right now playing this heads up match. Well, good luck, David. Luck. And the heads up match does not last long, spoiler alert. I pick up Jack nine of spades. I'm on the button. My opponent has 10 big blinds left in his stack. I'm all in. Jack nine, suited natural nine. Good enough to be in here. And my opponent tank calls with pocket deuces. He's got a pair. And we've got a good old flip. And we're going to go to the run out. Let's go, dealer. 35K flip. Good remedy. Good, thanks. Deuce on the flop. Come back to 
Hey, nice run, man. Rig that man. Bink, bink, bink. Giving me that 100% check mark with the straight, and that is going to seal the deal. I have officially won this 2200 Canadian dollar buy in here, and I've won the first place prize of $120,000 Canadian. A very, very successful Montreal trip, and I win this very beautiful, lovely playground ring. It always feels really nice to close this one out, and uh, you know, winning some all ins, getting very, very lucky throughout the way, it's always nice to win a tournament. Oh, my freaking goodness, what another sun run. Every single all in, gutter, bink, bink, bink. It is currently 5 a.m. in my hotel room. I have an Uber to the airport at 6 a.m. And I have this lovely ring, and it's always nice to bring back a souvenir. Can you please focus on this. It has uh, the playground symbol on one side, WPT Global on the other side, and October Millions, which is just lovely. So, um, yeah, I mean, I don't know what to say. It's, it's kind of sick to end off the trip this way. What a successful time. And I just want to say, is it just a coincidence that the very first time I happened to wear the Luck Dice uh, hoodie here, I bank? I mean, really? Is it just that coincidental that, uh, it, that, that it works? So anyways, this is uh, the last day, 24 hours left to, to get the, the merch, new merch drop. I'm giving away my Rolex that I first had that's engraved with the Rampage logo and this. So one lucky person who ever buys any of the merch is going to be entered into a drawing and uh, for one lucky person to win that very cool Rolex. Anyways, this is cool. This is very, very nice. A uh, nice little streak of tournaments I've got going on. Uh, a couple couple weeks ago, I was in Australia and won a little, little tournament there. Now I'm here in Montreal. Just all the foreign countries, not the US. I can't win in the US yet this year. Uh, to go over the numbers, I was. Uh, this was a $2,200 Canadian buy-in. I was in for two bullets of that. And that translates to roughly like 1600 USD. And I also sold 10% of my action on stakings. Like I said, I'm selling basically everything I'm playing for the rest of the year on stakings. So if you're interested in that, then, uh, you know, stakings.com, you can feel free to, to buy some action, but it did sell 10%. So shout out to those people who bought 10% because you made some freaking money out of the tournament for, uh, 120,000, 120,000 Canadian, which is about 86,600 USD. I tipped a little bit, so 86,200 USD, maybe something like that. Tipped 400 bucks. <sighs> all right, that's it. Um, I think it's really cool that's, that this all happened. So thanks so much for all the support. It feels really good to finally get it back. Like to be quite honest with you, I literally only played this tournament because like I showed up today like feeling pretty bummed. Uh, this trip didn't necessarily go great because I fired some other bullets and didn't work out. You know, random stuff was a little bit light on life tilt. And I was like, all right, this one's winnable. I'm going to try to do it. And it always really feels really good to like accomplish the thing that you set out on doing when you showed up in the very beginning. And I had to bring this because I felt like, why not? There's a chance that it could all work out. And it's just nice how it's just, it's just nice that a plan like this that that's so left up to chance can like work out in such a perfect way. Anyways, I'm done rambling because I have uh, I have to pack. I have to go to the airport and I've got to get on out of Montreal, actually. So thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next video. Amazing, amazing uh, journey, video, day. Thanks so much for following along. Hit that like button and subscribe if you're new to the channel. If you're not, then I don't know what you're doing, guys. Anyways, I'll see you next time. Peace.